Hello, I'm Microsoft MVP, Tom Morgan. Let's build something. Let's build a plugin for Copilot. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to get started. Instead of a simple hello world example though, I want to help you build something useful and impactful. Plugins are how Copilot can run code, ask questions or present information outside of the core body of knowledge it has from its large language model, or it's grounding in your Microsoft 365 data. Each plugin advertises the things that it can do and the information it needs to do those things. And the Copilot can choose to hand off a user question to a plugin to produce a better answer. For instance, if you own Contozo Airlines, then you might write a plugin that returns information about flights. So that when a user asks, when is the next flight to Seattle? Copilot can hand off that question to the plugin to be answered. We'll cover exactly how Copilot does that handoff and how it gives the plugin the information it needs later. So let's talk about what we're going to build. You may have heard or already have a communication manifesto, either written down or informally. It's a set of rules for how you should communicate with others. Example rules might be, be kind, keep emails short. If you criticize, do so constructively and so on. Well. I don't know about you, but I wrote my communication manifesto down on New Year's Day, resolved to keep it as a New Year's resolution, and then promptly forgot all about it. We can write a simple plugin that returns our list of rules whenever we ask for our communication manifesto, which is useful, but hardly groundbreaking. Don't forget though that Copilot already knows about the emails I've sent. So, and now this is way more useful, I could ask Copilot to look at my communication manifesto and my sent emails, and call out any emails I've sent that don't meet the rules I've set for myself. That's pretty cool, right? Let's build that. One super smart example of not reinventing the wheel that Microsoft have done is to say that Microsoft Teams message extensions can also be Copilot plugins. This actually makes sense. Extensions are small, self-contained pieces of code that are triggered by the user and which provide their information in text or adaptive cards in the flow of their work composing a new message. Swap out the user triggering the code for Copilot triggering it, and you have a plugin. This really helps us out as well because there are already loads of samples and quick starts for creating message extensions. There's one built right into the Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio Code. You are using the Teams Toolkit for Visual Studio Code, right? Simply click Create a New App, Choose message extension, pick a scenario. I chose the custom search results one for this as it's the easiest to quickly change to return different data. And then choose start with a bot. I chose JavaScript, but you can do this in TypeScript if you prefer. This will create a working message extension. If you press F5 to debug it, Teams Toolkit will do all the hard work of registering it and sideloading it in your Teams client so you can test it out or you could install and use the new adaptive card previewer extension, which is a lot faster than deploying it to Teams each time. By default, the sample that we have searches the NPM registry for packages. Okay, so now that we've got things working, I'm gonna make a few small changes. And actually the only thing I'm gonna change is one of the files here, the search app.js file. So let's firstly get rid of the call to the registry and also get rid of the for loop that writes out the results. There's already an adaptive card set up here with a template which we can reuse. I'm just gonna add some example manifestos in here. Okay. Oh, good work Copilot for GitHub, that's nice. Now, in a real delivery, you'd pull this information from a data store somewhere so that it can be edited and changed. But I'm trying to keep things as simple as possible for the demo. Now, regardless of what the search query is, our code is always going to return the same card listing out our manifesto. Now, about this search query that we're passing here, message extensions have to have a search query element to them, even though we're not actually going to use it. We could build out this code to have different manifestos for different types of communication, so email, Teams chat, etc., and use the search query there for the type of communication, but I'm just going to leave this as it is for now. So we can test this out in the adaptive card preview. It doesn't look the prettiest, and there are definitely nicer ways to lay out adaptive cards, but 
you know who doesn't care about how things look? Copilot. There's one more set of changes we need to make which are really important. Earlier, I said that Copilot hands off to a plugin, giving it all the information it needs. It does this because each plugin has a manifest file which tells Copilot what it is, what things it does best, and what parameters it needs in order to do those things. Message extensions have manifests too, with many of the same things. In your manifest, if you define a command that has two parameters, the Teams client will give the user two input boxes with the titles and descriptions you set. For a plugin, Copilot will provide the information as defined in the manifest back to the plugin, either with the information it already knows or by finding out by asking the user. For this reason, it's really important that the titles and descriptions in your manifest are really clear when creating plugins. These are the instructions to Copilot on what data to provide when invoking your plugin. Also, the overall description of what your plugin does is how Copilot knows when to invoke your plugin. If you're finding that Copilot isn't invoking your plugin when you want it to, it's probably because the name and description in your manifest isn't clear enough. Remember, you're writing descriptions for Copilot and not just humans now. See how I'm giving it as much information as possible about what the plugin does and why Copilot might want to invoke it. And in our command, we only have one, but there could be multiple ones. I'm describing what it does and what parameters are needed. I've chosen to build out the idea we spoke about earlier of having multiple types of communication here so you can see what that would look like in the manifest. And that's it. Your plugin is ready for testing. Sideload it or deploy it to your organizational store, and you should find that it shows up in Copilot chat as a plugin. You need to enable it before you can use it. There's lots of different ways to use this. We could ask it to review our previous emails, provide it with a draft email, ask it to check it. I wonder if we could ask Copilot to draft us an email that actually breaks all of our rules. So this was quite a simple demo, deliberately so, to show you how straightforward it can be to take an existing message extension sample and repurpose it for use as a Copilot plugin. In our sample, we've only returned additional information for Copilot to use, but you could absolutely use plugins as a way to give Copilot capabilities to take action on different services and platforms. Imagine breathing new life into legacy line of business software just by writing some commands and exposing them in a Copilot plugin. There are so many things you could do. It's all very exciting. I hope this has been a useful introduction to writing Copilot plugins. If you'd like to know more or have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. Thanks very much for watching.